Okay, well, you can see behind us, you can see behind us that we're the Creating Spaces group. It's Amna, Christina, Denise, Carla, and me. And we called ourselves the Dream Team because in Second Life or other virtual worlds, environments, if you can dream it, you can create it, which is true. Um, I know none of us, certainly I never thought that I'd be attending a virtual class in a place called Second Life, and it's been pretty incredible um, in terms of just bypassing the geography. We were all in different parts of the state, yet here we are on stage, dressed up, looking really cool and engaging. So uh, if you can dream it, you can create it. You can go to the next slide, Eileen. Be coming up soon. You guys have anything to add about that first slide, guys? No, look good. Okay. So, slide number two. You know, I, we were thinking about different uh, subjects in science, and I love astronomy, although I'm a biology person, um, and I just thought, wouldn't it be great to create a space here in Second Life where you could actually create virtually a black hole, which I know I'm in interested in, kids are inter interested in, and you could actually see what's happening at the event horizon of a black hole. Um, something that we really couldn't do in the classroom, creating a black hole. So uh, we truly can, as the text on the slide says, you can really engage and challenge our students to learn in these virtual worlds where time and distance can be, uh, you know, you can get past all that stuff. Um, Group, anything to add? Um, the people in the classroom are having trouble seeing the slides, Ralph, because of our names being in the way. I guess let's okay. move I think off. We need to walk off the stage a little. Okay. Maybe if you just um, get to the side so you're not too far away from the stage, but you know, maybe just to the sides of your big poster. And then okay. I can still try to get you. Whoops, somebody went behind the poster. <laughs> it's always fun. <laughs> no, <see. laughs> How's that? That's like me. I can't walk. Better? Can better? Let me see if I can get you here. Okay. Yeah, can all of you see better? Yeah, Tammy likes that better. Okay, I'll try to get your voices I'm in really two. You know what? I'm going to try to put the slide in two places. There. Oops. Oh, sorry. I brought up the wrong slide. Sorry, Ralph. Let me go back okay, to the no, other one. Okay. There. Okay. We kind of like, I kind of well, like the slide. Um, but, it, you know, it just, it's amazing the things you can do in Second Life and these other virtual environments that you can't possibly do in a classroom. So just taking kids to this, to the black hole would be an amazing experience, I think, for the kids and for us as, as teachers. Uh, uh, I, shall we go to slide? Yeah, I, I will. Do, I just want to chime in with one thing. We've been pretty much confined to this one island. There are many islands that actually have some of this on them. And next semester, when we lose this island anyway, we'll go back to the other ones. There's something called the Exploratorium from San Francisco that has a lot of these, um, you know, atomic models. There's the NASA website, I mean, the, the NASA virtual world. So, you know, maybe we'll do some tours over there, but um, some of these ideas are out there, but we, we do need a lot more. So um, that's great. I'll turn my mic off and I'll try to give you multimedia um, and pull your slides onto a number of these platforms. So uh, I'll bring the next one up now. Okay.
Okay. Oh, I, 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 I can see slide three now. Okay. Should I just go on with this uh, this slide? Okay. Um, create a space for exploration. I mean, certainly for biology students. And you know, I only mentioned something about the Exploratorium in San Francisco, which I think is a science museum, if I'm not mistaken. Mistaken. But we can you can generate your own, our own science museums in these virtual worlds. I remember taking my kids into a science museum where they could walk inside a heart and see the different chambers of the heart and the different vessels of the heart. Um, and we could do that here. We can create. You know, there's, there's these virtual spaces, a virtual circulatory system where kids could be blood, blood cells going through the vessels and the arteries and um, the vein, the venous system of the body. And again, th these are things that you're really, you can have nice schematics in the classroom, but I think this, this is, in many ways, uh, it's more of a total experience for kids. And the final point I want to make just about kids in virtual spaces, they're here anyway. I mean, they're using computers, they're using their smartphones. So for them, I mean, this is so intuitive that, you know, as opposed to someone like me that took a long time to get comfortable here, but it's so intuitive for the kids to spend time in these worlds and online that, you know, they're almost automatically motivated to learn and engage in the experience. So I think that's what's fantastic about these spaces. And I think that's the last of my little spiel. Anybody, anybody from the group want to add something? Um, Ralph, I was just thinking, yeah, yeah. you wanted them to be a blood cell, but would they be their avatar, or would they be a blood cell as they went through the body? They can be whatever they want to be. Um, I was thinking blood cells, but they could be an avatar uh, and just, you know, find out what chambers do I go through, how do I get to the lung, how do, how do I become oxygenated. There are just so many things you could do. So um, it's just an amazing, an amazing world we have here that we really should use. We would have to build that room, right? But Eileen's got to talk to us about that. I mean, do we actually build it, or do we have uh, computer coders that come into these spaces and, and build things? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm actually, you can do both. You know, we didn't have time in this class to, you know, get too much into the building. But um, we're, this new program that we're starting will have people, hopefully, who are artistic. Um, but building, this is a really good math function. All of these things are just boxes that you uploaded pictures onto. I mean, we're using this in a very primitive way, but you can actually create the shapes. Um, you know, it takes someone a little more artistic and talented than than I am, but um, hopefully we'll be getting some of those people. A lot of what was originally done here was done by a 13-year-old um, who wow. happens, yeah, they just naturally, you know, this kid happens to be a nephew of mine. He's going to become an architect. His father's an engineer. Um, he just naturally builds in 3D. So I, I think there will be, using multiple intelligences, a lot of different types of talents could be put into use. So you can make anything. You can, everything you look at is just a, an object that was shaped and put colors on it. So, um, you know, we haven't had time to learn how to do those things. We're using it pretty much as a webinar. But um, you really, you're right, Ralph, you're only limited by your imagination. And um, I'm really hoping to get the creative people moving on this and, and keep you guys surprised because there might be some hidden talent in our own group. It's just you don't have time for it right now. But, you know, I'm hoping, you know, this is a, a brave new world that is moving beyond the gaming world. So, you know, pretty much anyone could build it. And I think you'd probably find you have kids in your own families that could do some of this. So Sorry, I'm, guys. okay. I, you want me to bring up the next slide? Okay. Please. Sounds good. Thanks.
Okay, this is um, one of my slides. Um, this is me. Uh, windows on weather, climates, and landscapes. And um, I envisioned creating a virtual space for the students to inquire about weather patterns and topography, kind of like uh, a window. It was my idea, and they would be able to look into the window and interact with it. And then they would be able to you know, make determinations about um, how that weather formed or how that landscape formed, whether you know, it was clouds forming or like on the bottom slide, the river's meandering across there and forming an oxbow lake. And these are all terms that they could learn, you know, interact with and engage them to learn about their vocabulary. And they could um, write a report or, or um, bring friends in to talk about it into the room, into this weather room. Um, let's see, I did more than one slide. I don't know if both of them are in here. Um, you know, geography comes into play. We've got plateaus that are forming and what kind of rocks they formed out of and what kind of weather or what kind of climate was uh, that weathering pattern formed in. Those are some of the ideas. I think another one of my slides was going with that survival theme um, in a virtual world. Again, um, those are the two ideas that came to mind for me. And that the avatar would be in the uh, room um, and then experiencing this, this weather and understanding how it forms. Any questions? Yeah. yeah, I think it's a, a great idea, Denise. Uh, this, just being able to uh, experience different weather uh, types in this world without having to go through a blizzard in the real world or, or sandy in the real world is so. Um, such disruption could be reduced, um, so that can kind of get some, some of the social aspects, some of the uh, community aspects into the lesson as well. That seems to really get thinking about not only what the scientific process in itself, how it's actually being formed and how it impacts us, but it can get them thinking about like, what the scientists and environmentalists to kind of think about how we can improve our um, practices so that it's, it's not so detrimental to us, uh, our living. So that's, you know, it can, it can actually be more than just a science lesson, it can really be a, you know, a learning experience. Anybody have any questions? That's about it for um, my two slides. But if anybody has any questions in common, good. see the transfer or the switch of electrons occur. And I thought that this would give 
students more of a concrete um, understanding of a very abstract concept. Um, Sounds great. Yeah. But, um, see, okay, so we could go to the next slide, I think. I talked about the linking of atoms, and this is just. Um, reiterating the same concept, just showing you some examples. We have stranded DNA, <coughs> and we have something um, newly found here called, I believe it's called hexabenzocoronine, and it's actually um, the first picture that they've taken where they can actually see the bonds um, within this, within this a chemical component. They can see the bonds, and the bonds appear brighter and short. And the bonds that appear brighter and shorter are more dense. So I thought that was interesting. This is something new that's come up in science. Um, next slide, if there is one. I think this is the last slide. Oh, is that okay. is that's not the right one? Okay, sorry. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, I think there's one more. Yeah, the last slide. I didn't know you were going to use all three, but that's fine. Okay. Um, so let's see here. So this is where I kind of went a little bit further with this and said, well, if we can look at chemistry and we can look at bonding, we can look at elements and molecules and different types of bonding. Why can't we? Um, why can't we, what's the word I'm looking for, tweak it to different natural environments or different environments, any kind of environment. So this is where I thought that depending on the dynamics of the classroom that these lessons and um, this virtual world could be uh, geared to specific uh, populations within the classroom, whether they are uh, just a typical inclusive classroom, if they're exceptional students, if they're honors chemistry students, um, or if they're uh, multiple intelligences. I mean, this can be geared in many different ways. So, for example, um, if we wanted, if we want, let's say we had a beach scene uh, with an ocean in the background. Pretty much inclusive of um, the whole, the whole uh, PowerPoint presentation that we've given you tonight. But anyway, that's my ideas. <laughs> Great ideas. But I think the gist of our Creating Spaces group is that truly, if you can dream it, you can create it. And I think it would really engage and motivate our, our kids to, uh, to learn, which is why we're here. Are there any Thanks questions or comments? I don't know why Ralph had to include that, Ralph. What? <laughs> this is us watching the sunset, I guess, huh? Can oh, is that? Now? Oh. Did we not want to share this with the group? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, and who's the one in front of the camera there? Wait, no, that's Ralph in the background. It's not me. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> For money, I won't put this up on the YouTube. <laughs> I think. I, know. I, I changed to a vampire avatar, and that's what it came out as. And um, I, so I had to change again tonight. I think it looks I it was good. engaging and motivating, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say one more thing, serious thing about creating spaces? Mm -hmm. The thing I like is just the three dimensional aspect of the virtual world. And, you know, you can, uh, Carl was talking about the bonding. Um, I always was confused with polar versus ionic versus covalent because it's a very three-dimensional kind of thing. So if kids can just, they can go around the three, uh, 360 degrees and actually examine what the electrons are doing and where the orbitals are. And I just love the 3D aspect of, of the world here. 
And that's the last thing I'll say. I agree with that, Ralph. I was just thinking about the geology, some of the um, mapping underground in 3D and how you could travel through the rock layers. That might be very interesting, too. That'd be awesome. Then I'm going to go into a glacier, so it gives them a little bit of opportunity to do it. Um, and that way it shows you that just because, you know, it's it's not just a circle, that there's other places it can go. And that's what I thought would be a good idea. There's a lot of videos on um, when I was looking at um, for different things for um, his droplet, Donnie, and he goes into the atmosphere, and then he comes down his rain, and you know, cute little things, um, but if you start out as that, then I think this is a good um, sequel to being a little drop in the song. Um, and then the next slide is pretty much the same thing as the rock cycle, um, and with that one, I thought it would be interesting if after they do the rock cycle and then they choose the different things, is maybe they could draw out what would happen and what kind of rocks they would end up being. Um, not too sure on that one. Um, and that's that's what I have to say about those. I think that was a good idea, <coughs> you know, with the water and the grain of sand. I like that. like that too. Thank you for coming back to my slides. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm glad you mentioned it. I, I didn't see it so fast. Yeah, sorry. I think I... I they were just numbers, and I wasn't sure what numbers okay. to bring up, so my apology. Okay. Nope, that's all right. We came back. Um, <laughs> Good. <laughs> anyways, um, we already did our ending of the slideshow, so I just throw this as a PS. So um, I think we're, we're done. Can we sit down and hear the next group? You certainly can, and I'd like to thank you all very much, and I'm afraid I will mess things up if I try to do a gesture, but we can, we can all give you an applause. So thank you very much. There's lots of great ideas here.